That's true. I was trying to think of what 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 partners with Texas. Uh, nothing. Texas is so unique. It's so, so like we're right. Texas. Well, Texas partners with us. Hey, howdy, partner. Right. We partner. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't need partners. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the show with no name. My name is Daniel. His name is B. And uh, B, I have a question for you tonight. Well, actually, I have two questions for you tonight. And after I ask the first question, um, I have like a, a little bit of a story to tell. Um, so, so wait, so so I, when you ask me the question, <laughs> I shouldn't respond until you tell the story. No, no, no. Is that a, okay? No, you have you have the opportunity to respond. But then I have a mini story that I want to tell because I think I already know the answer to the first question that I'm so going to ask. So it's basically like, here's the question, Just knowing I you, answer, the... you go, you're wrong. Here's the story. <laughs> you're wrong! <laughs> <Let's>... <laughs> No, no, no. I just, I, it's not a, like a, it's not like a, you're wrong type of thing. It's kind of more of a, just getting to know you more as a person. Now I know we've mentioned multiple times and we've broken this rule multiple, multiple times in our podcast that we tried not to talk about timely events because we don't know when this is actually going to be uploaded or people are actually right. going to hear this for all we know, someone could hear about it in the future. So even though this is based off of a timely event that's happening right now, it could have effect or be listened to or heard at any time and it would still be just as effective at the time that the person hears it because I feel like this particular aspect of culture whether it's American culture or anywhere else in the world is going to exist for the rest of eternity for the rest of mankind this aspect of culture will continue to exist. so okay so before you get to the question I have a question for you <clears throat> because okay. I was going back and I was listening to one of our episodes and uh I <laughs> Do I have permission to be grammar Nazi on you when we're doing the episode or should I just Oh let my off? gosh. <laughs> you could you I okay, in fairness, in fairness, I get I I understand that I don't I like I, as much as I hate texting because it's an informal way it of is, communication. Yes. I like texting because I actually get to read it out loud and see how it sounds, but when I actually talk and I go on. I, this is why I should have never been a host. Why, why did we make this show in the first place? Why am I a host of anything or a co-host, whatever you want to call it? Why am I even doing this if I can't speak proper English? I know I mess up all there the time. Is, me too. And but I'm there sure, are far worse people than us, though. I'm, I'm sure, my, I'm sure my, my dear sweet mother would probably not be proud of the words that come out of my mouth. Not in terms of the content, right. but just rather the structure of the sentences. Uh, the sentencing structure, eh, whatever. See, even there, I'm not even quite a hundred percent sure if what I'm saying is correct. Whatever. We're going to move on. Uh, let's move on <laughs> to the first question. Now I did mention that I believe that this is something that's going to be part of culture for the rest of eternity. And that is gambling, gambling or betting is going to be part of our culture for forever. And the reason that I feel like this is a great topic for tonight is because one timely event is happening where, one of the largest lottery uh, participation in the history of the United States is happening right now really? with the Powerball wow. being over $999 million. It has maxed out. It is over a billion dollars wow. now. It's pretty insane, pretty incredible. I don't know when the actual drawing of it is. I think it's in two nights from now. I don't know the actual day. I think it's on, on a Tuesday night. Um, but anyway... Let's go into the question. So first question I have for you, have you ever purchased a lottery ticket before? I've never purchased a lottery ticket before, but if I had $1 billion, I would get the transmission on my car fixed. That's <laughs> I like how you, you kind of already you're kind of going in the direction of where I want to go anyway. Um, but I do want, but knowing your knowing your personality, knowing you as a person, and having this conversation, I feel like we've talked about this before. I know that you've never purchased um, a lottery uh, ticket before, um, but I have, and I wanted to tell just a, a real mini story before I dive into the actual questions that I have. I want to hear this, and I wanted to tell about my experience of buying a Powerball lottery ticket. Now, I didn't buy one during this one. It was during another time when there was another huge winnings. I think the winnings was over $600 um, million or something like that. But if you've never played the Powerball before in the United States, which I know a lot of people have, the way that the Powerball works is that you walk in and you select a series of like eight numbers or something like that in one section. I thought that that was it. You got like eight numbers and whoever has, you know, the 
uh, random array. And I think the numbers range from uh, anywhere from one to 26, I believe, but I don't remember all the rules, all the, uh, you know, all the specifics. This is over a year ago and I don't play the Powerball or lottery tickets ever. So I don't really remember. But I do remember how much of a stressful experience it was. Was this walking oh, does this in? start like on the south side of town? <laughs> you're out of gas. No, no, no. You I walk just... in a convenience store. It's got like bullet holes outside. I had a There's great. A I, had a, I had a friend who wanted to hang out with me, and uh, I actually got a chance to hang out with him just this last Friday. And um, uh, we were hanging out. This is over a year ago. We were hanging out, and he tells me he says, "Hey, do you want to buy a lottery ticket?" And I'm like, no, I never want to buy a lottery ticket in my entire life. I'm just not someone who, you know, purchases lottery tickets. I don't want to gamble with my money. I just, you know, don't want to. And he goes, well, it's the highest it's ever been in the history of blah, blah, blah. And it's like this amount of dollars. And I'm like, well, that's a lot of money. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I've never bought a lottery ticket myself either. I just want to buy one. Let's just do it. Let's try it out. Let's see how it goes. You're, you're in college so at the time and you're thinking that's a whole lot of tacos. No, no, no. I'm not in college. Oh, you're out. I'm not you're in out college. This, this is out of college. Yeah. So this is out of college. Um, and I go, okay, fine, whatever. You know, you want to do it. Let's go do it. So we go in and I didn't realize that there are five columns that you have to that you get to select numbers and you can only win the grand prize if you purchase all five columns which ends up costing you like way more than what I thought I thought I'm going to spend like $5 and get a chance to win no it's like you know like $60 to buy the all Good five grief. columns or something like that I didn't end up buying all five columns I bought three columns which means that even if I'm right for the three rows of numbers which again, I had no idea how to pick these numbers. I'm picking them at <laughs> random. I'm like, okay, my birthday's on the 21st. I'll put 21 there. Let me see here. Uh, there's eight candy bars on the <laughs> shelf there. Let me put down eight. Like, I had no idea how to pick the numbers, and there's so many numbers that you have to select down. And I thought that was three columns worth. You have to be correct in five columns to win the grand prize. I'm like, who could even win this thing? I get that everyone's buying tickets, but how is it possible that anyone could even win the full amount and get all of these right? That's why it's so anyway, that was my and climbing, yeah. <laughs> that's why it keeps climbing and it gets up so high. Anyway, that was my my stressful experience of buying a lottery ticket and I never want to buy one. But uh, ever again. But that's not my question for tonight. So my question for tonight, knowing you, knowing your personality, knowing who you are, you're a good-hearted person and Thank I feel you. like if you with I feel like you're a very giving person too. That uh, thank you. So I, as much as it pains me to say this, I want to scratch out the idea of giving completely out. That's you fair. Can't okay. Give money away. I give seventy five percent to charity. Right. Okay. Yes, I, I want to know. I start an orphanage for know. homeless people. Right, right, something like that. Right. Oh, an orphanage. I, for, <laughs> I start an orphanage for homeless people. I don't even know. <laughs> Are you homeless? You can be part of my <laughs> orphanage. <laughs> Does that work? That sounds really bad. That sounds really bad. Ah, that's just the um, first thing that came to my mind. Anyway, okay, I got it. So, yeah. If you had a billion dollars, or d- d- forget the forget the number amount. If money was not an issue, the first question I have for you tonight is, what would you do with the, your winnings? Like, what are this the 10... Really cool. Great question. What are, like, the 10, like, most ridiculous things that you would do? Just, like, a, like, a, like what's, like, one of the... What's the top thing that's on your list that you already know? Well, I guess we already heard that. You want to fix your transmission. <laughs> um, it's not, like, so buy tra- a new car. It's just fix my car. <laughs> <laughs> not buy a new car with a billion dollars know, that you have. If, you can get like, this car, and its transmission is perfect. No, no, fix, get, fix the one that I've got. So what would be some of the things that would just, that, right off the top so, of your head, so you already know. Let like me say this would, first. So before buy. any of like the top 10 items I'd buy or anything like that, I would still want to work. I would still like either A, want to be employed or possibly with the money start my own business and work um, because I just couldn't live the lifestyle. And I've, I've, I've had periods of my life where I've been unemployed for months at a time and people are like, oh, that's cool. Vac-. And it's like, no, it's, it's like great for like the first week and two weeks. And then after <laughs> that, you wake up every morning, you're like, I have nothing to do, no reason to live. So I would still want to be employed, but that would, that would, that would probably change. I might tell my boss now, I'd be like, Hey, I'm just working at home every day. And if you don't like that, I quit. I'll go. <laughs> Cause I don't need your money. <laughs> Um, so, so one of the things that I've kind of always wanted, 
And to some degree, I could kind of get that now, but uh, I would make it with, with this, obviously with the no money or money is not a problem sure. tagline on it. I would buy a very nice um, penthouse or AKA condo in um, downtown, probably either DC right near the mall um, okay. or somewhere around there or a place that I really wanted to live. If I found a city like I don't want to live or possibly a couple of cities, like I'd buy one in Dublin, but I wouldn't want okay. to live there in uh, the winter time. Is there a is there a private jet that comes along with that too that can charter you di- like a direct flight from one place to another? You know, I, I so I kind of guess at this point with this much money, I would probably purchase that as well. I mean, it's never really been something that I thought about. Like, hey, I got to get the private jet. But thinking about it now, like, how are you going to get yeah, flying from your kinda... DC place? It's like, yeah, that's the thing is <laughs> is that uh, what well, you know because I could be like, well, I'll just fly Southwest. They don't go to Dublin. Oh, oh well, I'll fly Delta. Well, then you're going to switch like to whatever, whatever the, 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 but even then, but see, I don't think you're going to be jumping from one commercial airline to another. Yeah. So I don't really have, I'm funky because I love airports, but I don't like being on planes. I don't think anyone does. That's probably, unless you're a pilot, I guess. So I, what yeah. I would do is I would just buy the first class ticket. Uh, that's true. Right. You could always buy first class. So I'll just, I'll just buy first which, class. Which, by the way, if you go southwest, there is no first class. It's open. Yeah, that, that one. So that's like the, I call that like the cattle car one. of the skies, man. They just shove you in there, and wherever you can fit is. I have to tell you though, out of all the people that I would not want to sit next to on an airplane, it would probably be the person who won the lottery, who's on his way to his Dublin penthouse, <laughs> that I'm sitting next to, and I'm like. So you asked me a question like, so what are you, where, where are you headed to? I'm like, oh, I'm flying to, to Europe. This is, this is my third trip this, this year. It's fun that I get to go to Europe, but I hate being away from my family. What about you? I'm going to my penthouse. <laughs> I want a billion dollars a couple of years so, ago you, in the you lottery. You can't say it that way. You, you can't be all, you can't be all rubbing it in people's, where are you going? No, I don't think you would be I'm rubbing going it. to a party like... in Milan and there are smoking hot lingerie models there. I just don't know how you would position that in a conversation. Like, what would you even say? I mean, to the yeah. What if you like, ask me, like, where are you going? I just say I'm going to second house in Dublin. Dublin. Yeah, I just I, I have a home there. <laughs> What's your ba- <laughs> really? How did you get a home there? That's fantastic. No, I agree. I, I, I sell sheep. <laughs> okay, so so money's not an issue. So we already we already mentioned so so, so living so downtown DC would kind of be cool because you're right by that mall and some of those prices that would be are really, crazy. That would be really cool. And you're right by the mall oh, and that's sure. a great jogging territory because you know I like to jog. And everything yeah. is right down there. You don't have to. So, so and, and here's another neat thing about it. Like, well, be, oh, I would have a car, obviously, but it's neat because moving from Texas to here is I didn't need the car, right? Because yeah. everything I, I lived one block from a metro stop, and I yeah. worked. My first job was uh, like a block from the metro stop, and then my second job was two blocks from the metro stop. So it was, and like grocery stores were within walking distance. It was really, really neat. So right down there in downtown DC is really neat. And then plus like, uh, when all the young hotties find out that I live in downtown DC <laughs> with the super penthouse, they'll be like, so are you like a mover shaker? And I'm like, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a shaker. I can milk <laughs> I don't know where that goes. Uh, what else, what else would I buy with that? <clears throat> what is something that I was, you know, vacationing obviously is like a big one. Like where's a place that I've always wanted to go? That I've never been, and that would be Moscow. I like to go to Moscow. And in fact, yeah. what I would like to do, my boss won't let me do this, and I probably can't do it because of kind of security reasons. Um, mm-hmm. Is I would like to go to Moscow and study Russian for one month in Moscow. So I know enough. You would definitely learn it a lot easier. Yeah, it would be, if you it'd be immerse yourself in a culture. Exactly, I'd have to be immersed in it as opposed to here when I studied here and then I metro home and I'm I'm back home and I'm like okay I kind of got to make flash I have to be disciplined enough to study it for myself as opposed to going to work and I'm like hey who wants to speak Russian with me and they're all like none of us <laughs> know how to speak anything other than bad English that you the Nazi grammar guy are always correcting us. <laughs> okay so. So these, so these, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm, first off, I, this is, this You're is looking for like sound, the really cool thing, like the this orbital is mind sound control rude. laser? Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> I was going to say, this is I want this an orbital mind rude. control laser. This might sound rude, but these are kind of, these are kind of like, I mean, yes, you're very specific on locations at the end. I think that's awesome because I would hate if you just say, well, I'd get like 9,000 houses and 20 cars. And I don't know why you'd need 9,000 houses and only 20 cars that I think it'd be the other way around. But anyway. But these are kind of like these are kind of like very basic. And I'm just curious. I don't, I don't. Again, I'm not trying to knock you down. I'm just curious. Is there anything on that list that would just be so ridiculous that nobody else would want this? But money's not an op. Money's not an issue anymore. 
so you can have it. Whatever it is that you want, even if it's not something that's made yet, you're going to pay some scientist, you know, like, hey, spend the rest of your life or working or on this or one Research thing. how to make the orbital mind control. Yeah, how do you the, make, like uh, d- you know what, we're going to put, we're going to put a Star Wars reference because we got to get one in every, in every episode <laughs> and, and, and a Canadian reference at some point. We got to get that in there somewhere. But I like, I would pay scientists. I'd be like, if it were me, I'd be like, hey, figure out how to make a lightsaber. So that's what okay. you're going to do for the rest of your life. I want a lightsaber. Make it for me. So, I, okay, Money's so not an option. this may not be <laughs> as wild and as far uh, reaching as some of those ideas, but okay. I would definitely hire. I'm not sure if hire is the word, but I would find a way to make it possible to make some of my short stories into movies mm. or some of my, some of my writing into movies. Uh, and hmm. so I'd have to sit, you know, get, so get like an, like an editing team or a, a screenplay team and say, Hey, okay, so read this. This is my idea. How do we do this? Um, blah, 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 and make it into movies for other people to see. That is really cool. Actually, I do like that a lot. That's, that's actually, I know that's something that's always been part of you is you like writing and you have a bunch yes. of these stories that you've written and characters and things like that. And it would be interesting to see, you know, what they would look like on the screen. Would you be open, like, would you use part of that money you're hiring them already to make it the best that it can be? Would you be open to their constructive criticism if they felt like that needed changes for continuity's sake or for entertainment's yes, sake so or I anything would. like I that? I think at first I'd be kind of a little stone hand or not stone hand isn't a word, but kind of iron hearted. To the risk, yeah. right? I kind of be like, mm, well, because it's your creation. Yeah, I don't, don't want it one to be Han to die or something to that <laughs> effect. Um, uh, but spoiler warning: you know, after you kind of sleep on it for a while and you listen to these people, and I would also hash some of these ideas. So, Daniel, I would actually hire you because so here's so building off of that. <laughs> one, of, don't hire me. One of my <laughs> no, you're all your editing is awesome. So, which is funny because I do all the editing for the show. So, if it's not awesome, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the, oh, yes. So if you guys hate the show, it's all Brendan's right. fault. It's, it's, it was it was so my idea. The name it was, was all his Daniel's fault. idea. So you can whatever you hate. So if the name lured you in, That's but then exactly. you hated the concept of the show, that means I did a good job and Brendan did a terrible job. That's exactly the concept what it of is. the show. Evo- anyway, blah blah blah. So a dream that I've had ever since I was a kid. So when I was a little kid. So here's an insight into my goofy. I'm being transparent here, so I'm being completely vulnerable. So when I was a little Are you sure kid, you want to do that for the podcast. <laughs> I know this is not. They're gonna like like people will like post like comments like ha ha two sixteen stupid. <laughs> I'm like great, thanks, appreciate, love you guys too. Uh, so when I was a kid, I always wanted to um, be an actor and like win an os- win win Oscars or be kind of a famous um, and successful. I think Leonardo actor. DiCaprio is in the same boat as that. Yeah, so I would be kind of a Le- exactly Leonardo DiCaprio, except the thing is. He got what he wanted, and I just fantasized. No, he's about not. It. He hasn't won an Oscar. Yet. Oh, you're. Oh, that was you're my right. point. Oh, that was my good, point excellent point. That. You're right. Maybe he'll get one for the wait. The, the Revenant. The Revenant. Yeah, but year? by the time this by the time this podcast airs, who knows? He may already have one. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, not. When do point. they give out the exactly. Oscars? Do they give them out in October? Right. Uh, whatever. It's we're getting off topic. Go ahead. Tell me. Tell me your your childhood. So with dream. with this thing, I um, did enough movies and was successful enough that I created my own movie studio in San Antonio. And mm. I I kept the employees employed year round because there was always a production to do. Because you notice, and you're somewhat familiar with this, like after you film, boom, that's it. You're done. You don't. It's like now I got to go find another job to get paid. It's like, yep. hey, I was cinematographer yep. or camera grip eighteen for uh, you know uh, Beach Party. So 6. you would be an independent film. Yes, company. exactly. I'd make an that independent. Everyone film would be continue continually hired. I would exactly because like the minute we're done with and and you would work it in such a way that while we're filming and producing one product, we're f- either getting other products ideas and we're like, okay, this is going to be our next one, so that we know when we stop, we may have a lull and be like, hey guys, I gotta lay you off for two weeks or go take a two week vacation or something, but we'll be back in three weeks starting another product. Sure. But we'll come back. So the, the minute that you're done filming the Lord of the Rings and zombies, you immediately are onto the next product project. Yeah, pretty like, much. On, yeah. Onto, next... Like we wouldn't immediately start filming again, but we would definitely, there would be the, you're already in the process. And exactly. I would, I next, would definitely yeah. want to give the people somewhat of a break, but wouldn't be like a, Hey, whatever. I don't know where your next job is coming from. So the hope is then at that point, then the hope is then that you guys are also successful enough, not just that you have the funding for it now because money's not an issue, but you're also successful enough 
that you're able to uh, continue to do this. But then again, at the end, if money is not an issue, even if you suck at it, you can still print out worst movie ever who cares man who cares man i'm still rolling in the benjamins i make whatever i want i can make it rain in my studio here we go exactly (laughs) so uh, and so another silly idea i had uh several years ago so there was a a video game that i played uh, a computer game i still say video games i'm dating myself it was called baldur's gate baldur's gate one and then baldur's gate two and then they had like a baldur's gate two extension or something i don't know what it was okay um and I like fell in love with it. So it's like one of my top 10, top five video games of all time. And I had thought when I was at one point where I had um, a whole bunch of these stories that I'd written, I thought, you know, what would be really cool if these stories ever became successful is to make a sort of Baldur's Gate 1, 2 video game with all of the, you know, it's in the world that the fantasy world that I write about with these mm. characters and then give it to my quote unquote fan base for free. So I would oh, hire would really all of cool. these, you know, artists, programmers, whatnot, designers, and I would be paying them. And I'd be no like, hey, FYI, we're giving it out for free like so you guys can have free. this. And it's, yeah, it's, you know, the, what, what, you know, what better way than to make your, your fans happy by giving them something that would be that awesome. they love for free. Like, hey, that everybody really who cool. comes to see Star Wars the first week, it's a free lightsaber or whatever that they get. They, you'd be like, Wouldn't happen, but yeah. yeah no, exactly. That would, no, definitely. <laughs> that's, that's what, how many millions of people? It's a lightsaber made out of cardboard. All right, you'll have to excuse my throat clearing. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I feel like I'm getting sick or something. That's because this episode is so sick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was funny. That's really cheesy and stupid. Okay, so I want to switch gears a little bit here. Um, I did have something else uh, so on the same topic. Uh, I did pull up an article here. So something that was interesting. Now, we have talked about some of the fun things, and that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted this to be kind of more of a fun episode of, well, what would you spend all your money on, you know, type of thing. But I did find something interesting uh, when I was doing research for this episode uh, ahead of time in terms of the Powerball. And back in 2011, uh, Forbes.com, known for releasing the 500 wealthiest um, people in the world every single year. They always, you know, do a recalculation of who's made more money this year, and then they list them up. What is surprising, if you ever go look at that list... Oh, I'm sorry, I, it's Am not I down there at 499 <laughs> uh, Well, after you win the Powerball, you might be. <laughs> um, what's interesting, it's actually the Forbes 100, not 500, but maybe they do go up to, uh, to 500. What is interesting, and what's kind of scary almost, even if you're not from the United States, you've probably heard of Walmart before. What's surprising is the amount of family members that are part of the Walmart company that are in the top 20. There's like 13 of the top 20 okay, wait, so are wait, part of the on. Walmart So when you say fa- family members, you mean their last name is actually Walmart or so they've married into Walmart? Or they've or, or, married into right, the not Walmart like family members like, hey, yeah. I worked at Walmart for 16 years and now I'm familyed in because of my 2% mm-hmm. stock. Right, you mean no, family? No, I mean, I mean like family, like they married in or they were an okay. actual descendant of someone. It's wow. really surprising how many are in there. It's like something like 13 of the top 20 are part of the Walmart. So family. my last name is only two letters off from Walmart. <laughs> Maybe I should have. <laughs> you should find a way to whittle your, your name in there. Exactly. Just be like, don't you see my name right there? That means sign a check and send it my <laughs> way. Right. So, but what was interesting about the Forbes is that the Forbes uh, released this article back in 2012 called 10 Things to Do When You Win the Lottery. Now, I'm not going to go through all 10 of them, um, but I just thought some of the interesting things, all of them were just like the most safe answers that you could possibly think about. Like, for instance, remain anonymous. Right. Um, like, don't tell people that you won if they don't announce it. So if there's no state rules that they don't have to announce you as a winner. Like, for instance, if you win in New York, you have to have your name shown. Like that's part wow. of New York they state ever give law. A your name. For why the, these laws are? Uh, let's see here. Uh, so that people da, 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 can fleece you. Is that the story? For example, uh, your honor, I'd like are... to pass this law so that people can fleece Powerball winners. You got it. Yeah, it just looks like it just says that it has to be listed down as public record. But that's only for one particular lottery. That's for the Mega Millions in New York. You have to be listed. It's public record information if you win. Um, also, you'd want to see a tax pro before cashing in your ticket. That way you understand, hey, is it smart to take the installments or should I take right. the big lump sum yeah, that they can give you, which is going to be, yeah, yeah it's going to be super, you know, taxed. Um, a couple of other ones, and these ones again, uh, this is... <laughs> I didn't even read the description of this one. Number three, avoid sudden life changes. And written in there, 
Uh, don't do anything drastic like quitting your job or buying a home in Europe. <laughs> so I just, <laughs> it just immediately tells you. So check on the first B, one, bad on the second one. You were doing great all the way up until we got to the third one of here. Uh, one other one. Now, this one I thought, I as soon as I saw this one, I was like, yeah, I think most people would probably do this. Like, they wouldn't even think about it. Like, it'd just be immediately off the top of their head, pay off all your debts. If you owe any debt, immediately pay right, them off. Right, exactly. Most of the other ones are just doing things like investing and living on a budget. Even though you have a lot of money, just, you know, make sure that you're going off a budget. Also, they said something. Now, this one was interesting. You can offset the additional income from your lottery winnings with a charitable deduction, but you must make your donation by December 31st. So it's like being strategic with your charitable gifts, which I get that, yeah, there's some part of that that's good i mean you should be strategic but at the same time if you're going to give money just just give money exactly yeah don't don't give do it, it for, yeah. don't do it for the incentive for the right I don't purposes know. I just, exactly i feel like they're I'm, but i'm sure i probably offended a lot of people with saying that because there's plenty of people who probably <laughs> people you know, will always and, be offended uh, that's true actually that's something that i've learned about the world in 2016 that's... and even 2015 is that uh, people are just offended by everything this is why I mean, you literally develop everything. an orbital mind control laser i'm offended zap <laughs> I'm no longer offended. In fact, I agree so, with everything you say and should elect you for prime minister of Earth. I love that. That you know what? I think that's I think that's how we should do it. I think that's how that's that's, <laughs> that's how, how it should we get be ratings done. for that's, this. That's, show that's, no name. <laughs> just oh, people. that's a great idea. You know what? You know what? I forget. All right. How about so if we carve the we show with no name right now on the moon? That way, on like <laughs> romantic nights, every time they look, it's like free you advertising. Okay, so I didn't get a chance. I didn't get a chance to say some of the things that I would do with a million. Yeah, that's true. Because I will say, I will say one of the things that I don't have a a large list or anything. I can't think of like ten things that I would go golden Xbox. But I do know that would be cool. Um, Although I wouldn't want it. It just would be so unnecessary. So they have them. They have one. Like Taco Bell was on them or something. Well. No, no, no. That was a that was a PlayStation Four, but yeah, it was like a solid gold PlayStation Four, and it's just like the outer shell is actually made of gold versus plastic. But the the my question is. Why? I get that there's a no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. Because like, I won the Powerball, but it's, and I can buy a condo in Dublin. Like I've bought some ridiculous things in my day and age. But why would you even if you win that? Okay, let's say for instance you win that. What are you gonna do with that? You're gonna play PlayStation games. That's true. On That's it? Exactly, I agree. But aside from that, what are you gonna do with it? So okay, so on that note, and so we we should probably get back to the topic. On, I want to hear more of your stuff. But but on that note, why buy a expensive piece of art? Right? You won't even play it. It just hang on the wall, and you may not even see it every day. I mean, that's a good point, but I can kind of see that a little bit because you're like, it's artwork in the room, but a PlayStation has a function. True. And once that function is over... Yeah, eventually it'll break which down. Which it will become obsolete, or down. it'll break yeah. down, or something. Exactly. Once that becomes obsolete, what do you do with it then? Is it just a piece of artwork? Because I feel like anybody who wins that anybody who wins that immediately just turns around and says, I'm going to sell That's it. That's what I would do. You know, type of thing. Yeah. I would turn around and sell it in a heartbeat. And most, and to see the sad thing about it is and that then there's the probably who people you, out there. Then they sell it. You know what? There's probably people out there that, that have gold PlayStation 4s anyway, just because they can have it because they True. have that much money. Exactly. And they're just like, oh, my PlayStation is better because it's gold no, and right. sparkles. Exactly and right. you can see your reflection in it while you're playing, so you can see the sadness <laughs> in your eyes <laughs> of me being from your you. wasted life of mediocrity with money. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, that that's kind of my idea. That that's That's the idea of what I think. They think they have everything. I, that sounds that sounds like a bitter poor person talking, but it's true. Uh, they think they have everything, but in reality, they're just... I don't think having everything given to you in life is is the way. Now, if they worked hard for it, good for them. Right. Good for them. So we're, but that's also why we're going I never on the trail want to be of the old. affluenza uh, case. But anyway, so the items that you were going to buy were so I've, I, right I, off. Uh, I mean, like right off the top of you know the top of my list. I think I'd want to go to space. That's a cool I think one. that would definitely be in there. So no, I would you want, I wouldn't want a, to be like the first person to have a condo on the moon or something. And like, you know build what? me a location that I can and that's gonna that's gonna happen. That would that day. would cut down on costs for actually uh, shooting the show with no name on the moon because you would already be up there. And I would already be up there. Like, Daniel, can you just chisel it really large or something? Just you know, just I would have nothing else to do. I mean <laughs> I mean doing? unless somebody <laughs> sends me a gold PlayStation up there, I'd have nothing to do while I'm up there. So I might as well just 
you know, like, so I'd go around and shuffle my feet around the floor to like make out the letters and everything. And I'd be like the show with no name. And then every time people look at the sky, no one's going to see the man on the moon or the bunny or whatever they see when they look at it. They're just going to see a sign that says the show with no name. And they're like, people, (laughs) people will be like, man, do you remember when the moon didn't used to have advertisement on it? And I'll be like, do you, do you remember when the moon used to look beautiful in the night sky? I'm the guy responsible for that because I had because I want a billion dollars and I can do whatever I want. No, I would definitely want to go to space. So that okay, so be... going to space would there at least be any bit of trepidation or fear that you're like, man, this could fail, or I'm going to go into a place where if my thing isn't tight enough, the vacuum there would be sucks some fear. my eyeballs. Oh, no, out. no, no, no. I, no, I definitely, ha- I definitely have some fear. Um, space is a is a scary place. Right. I mean, I I think space is a scary place, and if you don't Dark think space quiet. is a scary place. Then yeah, well yeah. My I mean, bed is dark and quiet though sorry. too, and I don't find that scary. That's kind of like comfy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so glad it's dark. <laughs> and these pillows are soft. Okay, we're getting we're getting off topic here. Uh, let me tell you some. Okay, so some of the other things on my list. Um, I I know I I know we probably talk about it more than we probably would want to admit to it, and it sounds horrible that I'd pay my way to do this, but again, money is no option. I feel like I would want to be in a Star Wars movie. I'd pay them to put me in a movie. I'd be like, can I have a character? I don't even care. Kill me off. I don't even care. I just want to be in the movie. Give me a lightsaber, please. You can kill me off. That's fine, but I want to be in the movie. I just think that'd be fun. I think that you be should really like cool write your own Star Wars. <laughs> See, that was the thing. I, I was after the first one. I thought, man, if I had power, I would say. Look, here's the you guys can own it, but I'm writing the next couple of Star Wars movies. <laughs> that was horrible. I'm writing them. You're gonna buy it. You're gonna buy it from Disney. But no, Actually, they, I'd let them still have the rights and make the profits. But I'm the guy. I go look. No, no, no. Me and my team, we're gonna write it and produce it. But you Yahoo's, just get out the way. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would be, that would be interesting. A B influenced Star Wars movie. And I, I don't really even need the credit or anything like that. I would just be like produced by Oh no, they'd have to put your name in there yeah, somewhere. It could, it could if just you're be like written it. by Joe Stickerstack and B, right? Joe because so, I would co write it with yeah. Just the, I kinda I, want to meet Joe Stickerstack. I now. well I met him from the homeless orphanage that I purchased. <laughs> <laughs> found it earlier. Uh, I don't know how Joe Sticker Sacks his real name though, because I asked him what's your name and he was like, uh Joe. Joe what? Sticker stack. <laughs> Most of the other things that are on my list would be just items that uh may not necessarily exist at this point or they're just kind of more in development. Um, we talked a little bit in a previous episode about a hoverboard. I think I would probably want to keep funding the idea for a hoverboard. So now like describe wanna... what kind of hoverboard that you, cause the idea I think they have now is kind of cheese. What do you mean like, by cheese? You I want like a real hover... magnetic field. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I would fund, I would fund people to go and do, I know people have been doing that for a long time now, but I kind of feel like part of the problem of why it hasn't happened yet is no, I, I just don't feel like there's anybody who's really funding it. Like hmm. there's nobody who's sitting behind and saying, look, here's a million dollars. Make it happen. Work for the next, make it happen, you know, type of thing. And I feel like if, I feel like if you give people enough time and technology eventually is going to get there and it may already be there. We just don't know about That's it true. yet. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I definitely think that that would, that would be kind of on my list of things would be, you know, a hoverboard and, 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 and Weirdly enough, as much as I'm not an entrepreneur, there's so many things that along the way, like in life that I've kind of wanted to do, but there's no way I could do it unless I got someone to fund it. Like I got an investor or something like I, we talked, uh, you and I talked, you know, privately. Well, I mean, it was in a group setting, but not over this. We talked about a restaurant idea that I had for many years. And, um, aside from a restaurant, You know, there are other things like there are store ideas that I've had of like, you know, apparel to sell and things like that. I think I would just want to just like experiment. I know that sounds terrible, you know, because it's like, why would you spend all that money? You know, other people could actually use it. But again, we can't give the money away. We have to use it ourselves. That was part of the the preferencing for, for this for this episode. I mean, I would basically just start a bunch of chains of different things of not necessarily chains, but different, you know, things that I've wanted to do like restaurants and, and stores and clothing and shoes and all sorts of things. Also, I play guitar. I'd want to have my own guitar company. I'd want to make and design my own oh, guitars. That would be cool. So, and I would go about it with like such, you know, a different approach. I'd want to find and make a new material. So it wouldn't be a wood guitar. There's a guitar company out there. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name of it correctly. It's called Aristides. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a Japanese company, 
and I'm sorry, nope, I just messed that up big time. Uh, it's <laughs> it's somewhere in Europe. I think it's Norway. I don't know the exact location, so I'm sorry. It's really I, <laughs> same time zone. It's somewhere in there. Right, region anyway. of the world. <laughs> anyway, people speak um, the same language, look alike. <laughs> They Same created history. their own material called Arium, and that's what they make their guitars. Wait, wait, their spell guitars this? are 100. percent It's called O R E O R R E A R I U M Arium, and it's their own material that they made just for their guitars. So it's like a unique thing. I mean, it's like a mixture of other materials all mixed together. But it's cool that they have their own thing, and and I want I would want to do something like that. You want to make up your own material? I want to make a super unique. Also, I'd want to make my own car too. Like, I wouldn't buy a car. I'd make my own cut because I have an idea for a car that I'd call the Centurion, and I've wanted to make this for years. And it, like, I already have, like, the picture in my head. I could yeah, kind of beautiful. draw it for you, but, like, I'd want to make, like, my own car company. That beats my be- uh, transmission idea. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'd fund my band, which would be awesome. That would to, be great. Be that would fun. definitely be a good one. Uh, but with that said, uh, to be honest, I, I guess we're probably coming here to an end as far as time wise. Uh, before we go, uh, be any parting words in, in in this episode. Now that we're terrible people who didn't give away any of our money and used it for our own selfish, uh, you know, desires of you know traveling and owning, you know, we didn't say yachts. I'm surprised that didn't come up. I'm not. Maybe I'm just not a, a boat man. Um, bah humbug. But yeah. Did I say that as my last? That's your final word, but humbug? Okay. <laughs> Daniel, as, a, as always, it was a pleasure, man. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And a pleasure speaking to you as well. You guys can check us out on Twitter. Um, we did change our Twitter handle. So in previous episodes, we mentioned it, but it's linked below that it's incorrect. Uh, I got locked out of the account. It's a long story. If you want to tweet us a question or ask us something, you can find us on Twitter at Texas Waffles. As it's the most unique name you could ever think of. That's all I have to say about that. B, if you've got nothing else for tonight, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we hope you guys will check in with us again soon.